Good morning, class. Welcome to your daily current affairs on Paper Hindu. So, let's see today's articles. So, the very first article is about Supreme Court says it can end wait for consensual divorce or divorce. So, what it is, what it meant is that if in a di in a married couple, if their relation is beyond consolable or if their uh, relation is irretrievably break break broken down, in such cases we can give them consensual divorce without any delay. Earlier, they should be waiting for at least six months, but now Supreme Court has used its special power through Article 142. So, what does Article 142 gives uh, Supreme Court certain special powers? So, let us see this Article 142. Just a second, yeah. So, Article 142 of the Indian Constitution empowers the Supreme Court of India with a discretionary power to pass any such order that it deems as necessary for complete justice, for complete justice in any matter pending before it. So, Supreme Court has opted to use its special powers guaranteed through Article 142 of Indian Constitution which says that the Indian Constitution empowers Supreme Court to make or to use its discretionary powers to take certain actions or order when it seems necessary, when it deemed necessary to obtain complete or entire justice. So, that kind of discretionary powers Supreme Court is using this time to delay the pending cases or to, uh, to uh, reduce the delays, to avoid these delays of pending cases of consensual divorce. So, what it is trying to do? Easy settlement of consensual divorce on the grounds of irretrievable breakdown of marriage. So, if both the couple are irretri irretrievably to be, uh, be together, that means their bond is broken already so that even apart from any counseling or any number of uh, trying by any other third person, they will not be again be together. In such cases, they can opt for instant divorce now that can be man or that can be woman, fine. So, Supreme Court says it can use its extraordinary power under Article 142 to grant a divorce on the ground of irretrievable breakdown of marriage if separation is inevitable and the damage is irreparable. So, on the grounds that if the damage is irreparable and the separation is inevitable. So, nothing can change their separation, nothing can stop their separation until unless the judiciary thinks so. Even if it is stopping, they cannot be together anymore. In such cases, if the damage is irre irreplaceable or irreparable, in such cases, they can opt for instant divorce. So, why should the Supreme Court use this Article 142? Why can't it give direct, direct judgment? Because it is against the Hindu Marriage Act. The ground of this inevitable, the separation is inevitable and damage is irreparable. That ground is not mentioned in Hindu Marriage Act as a ground for divorce. That is why Supreme Court has is using its special discretionary powers under Article 142 to grant instant divorces. So, that is about this article. So, yes, the Supreme Court on Monday held that its extraordinary decision under Article 142 of the Constitution can be used for the complete justice for couples trapped in bitter marriage by granting them divorce by mutual consent, sparing them the misery of waiting for 6 to 18 months. So, minimum span of 6 to 18 months they have to wait in order to get their consensual or mutual divorce. So, in such cases, government has taken the step. So, the constitutional bench has mentioned that the same extraordinary power could be used by court to squash or to quash pending uh, criminal or legal proceedings, be it over domestic violence or dowry against man or women. Any kind of domestic violence cases, DB cases against man or women or dowry cases, all these cases can be settled by this methodology too. So, that is what they have mentioned. So, why it is issue? Because it is against the Hindu Marriage Act. That means that ground of irreparable, damage irreparable or breakdown inevitable, such kind of notions are not mentioned in Hindu Marriage Act. That is why Supreme Court has come up with this particular Article 142, used its discretionary powers through Article 142. Next, local articles.
this. So, consultation on sedition law or in final stage, say center. So, what is the sedition? Before knowing into this, we need to know what is the sedition. It defines sedition as an offence committed when or so it defines sedition as an offence committed when any person by words either spoken or written that means by any ways of communication that can be spoken or that can be written or by through words by signs or by visible representation that can be by play cards or otherwise brings or attempts to bring any kind of hatred or contempt or excites or attempts to excite disaffection towards the government established by law in India. That means if there is any kind of verbal abuse or hate speech or representation or making certain signs or uh, uh, visible representation through any means if you are able to uh, communicate with the other person on the grounds of hate speech or any other things which is a contempt or the intention behind this speech is to spread hatred or contempt against the existing government that is called sedition simple hate speech or triggering people to come uh, to commit any kind of violence against uh, the existing government that is called sedition now what is the issue consultations on sedition law are in final stage say center. So, currently we are consulting different people on how far we can uh, check this legality or how far or on what grounds can be issued this sedition law. So, the government and basically the negative or disadvantage part of the sedition law is that it curbs the freedom of expression, freedom of speech. If at all the government is hating certain community, stating that they have triggered uh, certain sections in the society and they will put them behind the bars. So, this is uh, a continuum of Britishers, uh, Britishers rule in India. So, they were also having this sedition law. The same uh, kind of methodology is being implemented into India. So, which is threatening to freedom of speech and expression in the country. So, that is the negative end of this sedition. In that case, the government in Supreme Court on Monday said that it had initiated the process of re-examination of section 124A, which is sedition law of IPC, Indian Penal Code and consultations are in the final stage. So, after understanding uh, like we have got into different consultations, right now we are framing up uh, different kinds of criteria for sedition. So, it is currently in the final stage. So, yes and the sedition is dealt through section 124A of IPC. So, appearing before a bench led by Justice, uh, Chief Justice of India, D. Y. Chandrachud, Attorney General R. Venkat Ramani has said that the government was very keen. He indicated that the final shape will be given to the exercise ahead of next parliamentary session. So, within the next parliamentary session, a proper shape of this session law will be brought up. So, based on that, we can further discuss and debate on this, whether the existence of sedition is, how far it is justifiable. That is what? Uh, the government has mentioned in Supreme Court that we will be taking up the same in next session of parliament. Currently, it is in the final stage. So, once that is done, we will go through that sedition act and what are the negatives, what are the positives also should be examined. Important for your polity. Fine. GS2. Next. Members of my day community to file condemn proceedings against panel. So, this is in Manipur, uh, mighty community from Manipur, they are demanding for scheduled tribe status and they are uh, majority of the people present in Manipur and currently some people are divided into OBCs and some are in Muslim caste too. So, they went to Supreme Court. So, the members mighty community contempt proceedings against a panel. So, what is this panel? HAC is the panel. So, let us go into the article. Some members of the mighty community in Manipur, which has been seeking ST status for, status for decades of span right now, have now said that they intend to file contempt proceedings against the Hill Areas Committee, HAC Committee. So, they are going to file a contempt in Supreme Court against HAC of the Manipur Assembly, which recently passed a resolution opposing their inclusion. So, what has happened? These people from Maite community of Manipur have been seeking for ST status for almost some decades ago, since decades ago. So, at that particular time, uh, right now, HSC committee have passed a resolution stating that they should not be included into ST. Now, the issue is that Maite community say is that you cannot, the HSC committee does not have its jurisdiction to issue such kind of resolution. So, HSC has no uh, jurisdiction to pass such a resolution without speaker's permission and it is contempt. That is what the lawyer of mighty community has mentioned. That is why they are going to seek 
justice in Supreme Court, fine. That is about this article, nothing more uh, required, they have given how many people are there, rest of the this comes under your social justice, again GS2, fine, next. India leads in laundering Russian oil and selling in Europe, report. Now, fine, let me read out this, then I will explain you. So, price cap coalition countries have increased imports of refined oil products from India, China, Turkey, UAE and Singapore that have become the largest importers of Russian crude, says Finland based group, thereby circumventing the sanctions. So, what is happening currently is that, currently what is happening is that, now Russia has huge oil exports. Because of the ongoing Ukrainian, Uk Russia Ukraine war, what is happening here is that Western countries have issued sanctions so like USA sanctions on exports of Russia. So now what is happening? This is, these western countries have issued sanctions on especially this oil exports or crude oil basically. Crude oil exports from Russia with which they are not able to purchase Russia's crude oil much. Now countries like India, third world countries, third world countries, India, China and rest of all the countries. We are the major countries, rest of all you have Turkey, UAE, Singapore too. So, what we are going, what we are doing currently uh, with the advent of uh, this Russia-Ukraine war, India has increased its uh, trade relationship with Russia, especially in terms of crude oil. So, our largest importer country for crude oil has become Russia now recently. So, what happened? Countries like India, Turkey, sorry, China, all these countries, Singapore, they are importing from Russia without these sanctions. So, whatever uh, the products that are being produced, products produced out of this crude oil, so any petroleum products or anything, these finished goods are being sold into western countries. So, I will show you in clear way. So, now these finished goods, whatever the finished goods are there, they are being again entered into western markets, western countries markets. Then what happens to the sanctions? So it is completely bypassing the sanctions, circumventing these sanctions and again indirectly it is further reaching the western countries. That is what this report says. I think it is clear. So what is what it meant is that the price coalition countries have increased imports of refined oil products, whatever the end products that are being produced in India or produced in China or Turkey are being used in these western or the countries which have levied sanctions on Russia. So India leads five countries named as laundromat countries that buy Russian oil and sell processed products to European countries thus sidestepping the European sanctions against Russia says a Finland based group that cited the last figures for the first quarter of 2023. So that is what they have mentioned. This Finland based company has clearly mentioned that India is among those five countries and the countries were named as laundromat and these countries are importing crude oil, raw crude, crude oil and the refined products are being sent to European and Western countries. So that is what this report says. So they are circumventing sanctions, that means they are bypassing these sanctions. Next. So, Japan to train 1000 Indian engineers for the bullet train project. So, if at all, we, we don't, in India we do not have bullet trains as of now. So, we have one day Bharat trains as of now, that is the fastest trains that are available. And currently, uh, to build these bullet trains, we need different kinds of uh, equipment and infrastructure to pass through these trains. So, for that case, uh, 1000 engineers of Indians are be, will be trained by Japan. So, as many as 1000 Indian engineers will be trained by Japanese experts before starting work of the high speed rail track system, high speed rail, H S R, high speed rail track system for Mumbai, Ahmedabad, 
high speed rail corridor which is mahsr very important for infrastructure of economy fine so the bullet train track being built between mumbai and ahmedabad will will use the ballastless slab track system as j slab track system as used in the japanese shinkansen high speed railways so what is it going to do they are going to build the similar high speed rail network in mumbai and ahmedabad area okay so similar to that of japanese track system that is why this track system is completely different from india's track system so we are getting trained by japanese fine so that is about this article just go through this that will be enough next another more important article for today inaugural of asian indian maritime exercise in south china sea from today so what we are going to do we are going to exercise our aerial sorry our maritime exercise with asian group so india is associated with asian regional grouping to to exercise this maritime exercise and it is called as aim 2023 aime aim 2023 very important india and asian so what is asian so association of southeast asian nations so in a step further in the expanding of indian asian military cooperation the made in asian indian maritime exercise is set to begin on tuesday with the war games in south china sea so currently if you need to know how this is important for india so we know that chinese footprint is increasing all over the world in different countries and china is very uh, aggrieved or it is very much interested to acquire this south china sea and in this particular south china sea we are having our maritime exercises so that is one thing which is important for our country fine so indian naval ships what are uh, the naval ships that are being that will be participating into this particular maritime exercise with asian that is satpura and delhi these two naval ships will be participated with rear admiral that is not required who is who is participating but yeah so satpura and delhi will be our naval ships which will be participating into this military games and it is started today may 2nd to till may 4th fine so that is about this aim and aim 2023 will provide an opportunity for indian navy and asian navies to work together closely and conduct seamless operation in the maritime domain so they are going to have a positive relationships maritime relationships so work on the security issues to work on any terrorism issues in the border uh, when a border areas all these things can be verified can be checked through or can be developed through this maritime exercise that is what they have mentioned their main aim next another article so if charge sheet is filed on time no question of default bail so first of all what is charge sheet what is an fir we need to know so yes whenever a particular crime is being committed on the accused person the initial first information report will be filed so first information report is a report that gets to the police first so he he or she whoever is a police they will file this first information report based on the charges or based on the victims note fine either orally or in writing so it can be through oral means or through writing then what is a charge sheet it is a key document and it is also the end document submitted by the police that indicates a crime has been committed so showcasing the work of police will be starting with an fir will be ending with a charge sheet okay like as part of documentation of a particular a uh, crime that is being committed now what supreme court has mentioned the issue here is fir filing is fine if charge sheet is not being filed within the stipulated time then a default bail can be granted to the person who is accused so now supreme court has mentioned that even if there is a incompletion in filling up the charge sheet still that cannot be the ground of issuance of this default bail that is what supreme court has mentioned so if charge sheet is filed on time no question of default bail if it is on time no question of default bail even if it is incomplete still that cannot be the grounds of issuance of this default bail so the supreme court on monday held that the accused is not entitled to seek bail on the grounds of charge sheet though filed within the requisite period remains incomplete for the lack of sanction under 160 section 167 of code of criminal procedure crpc fine so that is what they have mentioned and 
different sections are also been mentioned let's see this according to the section 167 of criminal procedure code crpc an accused will be entitled to a defi default bail if the investigation agency failed to charge it within 60 days of from the date of remand so from the date of remand of the accused within 60 days if the poli police is unable to file a charge sheet then a default bail will be granted th to that accused and right now so for certain categories of offences, the stipulated period can be extended to 90 days. So, buffer time will be another 30 days. Therefore, once the final report has been filed, it is a proof of proof of completion of investigation. If the final report is filed within the period of 180 days or 90 days or 60 days from the initial date of remand of the accused concern, he cannot claim the right of accrued to him to be released on bail for want of or filling of sanction order. So, bench has told that if it is being filled before that particular time, then they cannot be issued any kind of default bail. So, it can be extended till 90 and in some cases even till 180 period of time they cannot be issued any kind of default bail. That is what Supreme Court has mentioned. Fine. Next. I think that is it for today. Yes. Trade pact lifts India's financial year or fiscal year 23 exports to UAE to 31.3 billion dollars. So, our because of the trade pact CEPA, what happened? Our trade with UAE has been increased to 31.3 billion dollars for this fiscal year. Almost there is a rise of 12 percentage. So, exports from India to the UAE, exports from India to UAE have been grown to almost 12 percent in 22 23 to hit a target or to hit a limit of 31.3 billion dollars, more than double of 5.3 percent growth in India's overall exports. So, if you consider overall exports of India, it has been almost double to 5.3 percentage of exports to UAE, overall the exports. So, following the implementation of bilateral trade pact, SEPA, fine. So, that's what and during the SEPA implementation period, uh, I mean CEPA implementation period May 2022 to May March 2023, bilateral trade increased from 67.5 billion dollars a year earlier to 76.9 billion dollars an increase of 14 percentage. So, because of this CEPA agreement what happened earlier there used to be a trade between 67.5 billion dollars, this trade has been increased to 76.9 billion dollars. You could have asked. So, earlier you have mentioned 31.3. Now, what is this? 76.9. This is entire trade that is only exports. So, if you include imports to here. So, this has been increased to almost 14 percentage. That is what Ministry of Commerce have mentioned. Fine. Next. Yes. So, that is it for today. So, those are important articles for today's, uh, from today's newspaper Hindu. So, let us see it again in the future classes. So, currently your current affairs will be stopped for today and after June's APPSC exams, further classes will be continued. Uh, compilations of these uh, newspapers will be given to you soon. Thank you for the session. Good day.